where we film it. It's also where <laughs> I work. <laughs> Brought to you by Cafe Reef. All righty. All right, everybody, you know exactly what time it is. Josh, can you get your index finger ready? Yeah, sure. Get ready. Get ready. Get everybody else, get their index finger ready. Right. Let's get those drum rolls going. Get those hearts in the chat. Let's get into the show. All right. All right. Welcome back to the Morning Cup. This week we have... A coffee from Ritual, which is a company out of San Francisco, California. San Francisco, California. A place that Tristan lived for about, what, a year? No, two months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not even close, Josh. Oh, I thought it was like a year. Oops. <laughs> Felt like a year. Um, Tristan and I actually had a whole, about two-hour conversation about San Francisco the other day. But that's not why we're here. That has absolutely no relevance to this. No relevance. Ritual is a... Uh, I've actually had one of their coffees before. And it was good, but it was very, very espresso flavor heavy. So after about half a cup, it, I didn't get sick of it, but it was harder to drink more of it because normally you drink espresso, you drink two or four ounces instead of 10 to 16. So, um, But this one I'm excited about. Yeah. This so is also an espresso blend. I'm going to look up some... Uh... Some stuff about ritual. Okay. Let me see the bag then. Let's see the bag. Let me get read. All right. So, uh, ritual was made in San Francisco, and since 2005. So they've been around for 15 years. Um, they're about us, says, but they're currently open for takeout and mobile ordering. So that's good to know. Um, they have three locations: Hayes Valley. That's where. That's where I used to live. You live where? Uh, near the Hayes Valley. Hayes Valley. Yeah. You said you lived up kind of towards Oakland, right? No. No. Man, right. you're getting all the information wrong. Yeah. No, I lived on the opposite <laughs> of it. Oakland and San Francisco are very close. Um, I thought you, you said you lived on the north side of San Francisco. I lived on, yeah, it was north of But it wasn't Market. up around the bay in no. Oakland. Okay. Oakland's on the east, east bay. East bay. Yeah, totally. All right, continue. <laughs> So, yeah, so they got, wow, they got quite a bit of open locations. Um, I wish I would have them. They got a real big presence. Um, man, Napa. They have one in Napa. They got one in Napa? I didn't realize this company was this big. Yeah, me either. They're pretty good. They're pretty big. Um, That's cool, though. They got a nice. Is that a picture of San Francisco? That is a picture of San Francisco. I see what you mean. Yeah. By a lot of San Francisco's, like, Small, but it's it's, yeah, big. it's, it's big. It's, very, it's like the, the smallest feeling big city ever. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and read off the bag real quick. Yeah. Go ahead and read off the bag. I'm gonna get online for their uh, uh, what they have, they have a description of Eureka on here too. Okay. Um. Yeah. So this coffee is called Eureka. Um. It is an Ethiopian, Honduras, and Brazilian blend. Um. And it's actually a seasonal espresso, which is very interesting. Um. The coffee was harvested in 2019. It was roasted on 8-5 of 2020. So it's still... what? It's uh, eight, four days old. Yeah, I can't math. So the coffee is four days old. This is some fresh coffee. Um, the description they give us is, we had a eureka moment after tasting what happens when we combine the clean berry notes from Hama of Ethiopia, the sweetness of... Uh, Satillo Cafe Forte, a natural Brazilian, and the citric brightness from Nelson Ramirez of Honduras. Um, and then the tasty notes they give us are blackberry, grapefruit, and persimmon, which I don't think either of us really know what persimmon is. We, we kind of had a conversation about it, but... Yeah, I can um, remember. So yeah, you're mixing three very different types of coffee. Ethiopians are going to be very fruity and berry-y. Um, Honduras... Honduras, you said it's very nutty. Um, I'm not 100% sure. Oh. Um, we are closed, my guy. So it says Eureka is our. Yeah, we're closed, sorry. Um, Eureka is our state motto, originating from the discovery of gold in California. Eureka means I found it. It's 
what we are thinking after tasting this rich blend of extraordinary coffees. Legend has it that the Alchemades was the first to use the exhibition when he finally discovered methods of determining the purity of gold in the 1800s echoed in the gold mines not far from here, uh, here being San Francisco. We, are also, we also love that our founder got married at, uh, on the historic ferry boat Eureka. So there's that smiley face. That's word for word what it says. <laughs> and then it says that they had a Eureka moment after tasting what happens when you uh, combine the clean berry notes from Ethiopian, the balanced sweetness from natural Brazilian, and the citrus sea brightness from the prized Honduran coffee. Oh yeah, we found it. You yeah. want to start brewing? That's cool. Yeah, um, real quick, I also want to say, I've never seen this on a bag, but since it's an espresso blend, it actually gives you 17.4 grams in for 33 seconds will give you 31 grams out. So they wow. actually give you like That's how to, well, not necessarily how to dial it in, but uh, like probably a good starting point before you, you know, pull That's the shot. very interesting smell. It is very interesting. Um, yeah, I'm going to start brewing and we'll talk about aromatics. Yeah, so it's a uh, one-third, one-third, and one-third, so equal blend across the board. Also, we're doing 40 grams of ground coffee and 566 grams of hot water, 200 degrees on the dot. That's very important. Sweet. No, um, so I think the last time I had ritual coffee, um, Jackson got our father uh, some Costa Rican, I think, from there. Um, and it was phenomenal. Uh, really, really good. Um, oh, this bag is made to protect our coffee and be kind to the planet, too. I was going to say, yeah, this I bag. Saw that. I saw that. This bag feels really, really interesting. It's, uh, it says bio something on the bottom. Bio trip. Oh, yeah. Nice. So I'm assuming this is uh, biodegradable. Um, it's really cool. It's, it feels different. It's not that plasticky, thick, um, paper plastic mixture that most higher end coffee shops are using. Um, yeah, this is like almost like you had a wax paper feel to it. That was the first thing I actually noticed about this bag was the way it felt and looked. It's got a very like natural matte finish and they're artwork, I don't know if you guys can see it, the artwork is very nice, it looks like it's hand-drawn, um, some flowers, maybe persimmons, I'm going to look up what persimmons are. Yeah, look up what a persimmon is, because I still have no idea. Does anybody know what a persimmon is? Do you guys know? If you guys do, let us know. Um, this coffee smells very interesting when it's wet. Yeah? What's the wet aromatics. What kind of what aromatics you get? Persimmon is a fruit. Almost like, I don't know. It almost looks I like a tomato. Idea. Persimmon is an edible fruit of a number of species of trees in the genius Dystoporus. Close. Yeah. I'm sure it's close enough. Yeah, it looks like a... Uh, like a tomato or like something? Like a tomato. Oh, it really does. Yeah. Interesting. It's, it's definitely a tomato family. Awesome. Sweet. So we're going to try that out today. I just want to say... So what do you smell? I don't know. It, smells, it doesn't smell like uh, normal, like traditional coffee, that's for sure. Maybe right. that's the Honduras. Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead and give it a give her a whiff. It almost has like a tomato-y... I was just going to say, it smells like tomato soup a little bit. I definitely get like a tomato-y... Uh, aromatic like scent yeah i, I kind of like very, it i kind of like it too I'm, Maybe it'll I'm, taste like tomatoes huh? yeah know. so josh is referring to jack once got a madcap and it tasted like tomato soup i think it was a kenyan he says yeah uh, he said it was a kenyan man that's why i like uh trying coffee all these things look smell taste different just by growing them in a different place or roasting them just slightly differently we're having a different uh, process, kind of like our black honey. Um, so I'm excited to try this. The smell is definitely, definitely interesting. Um, definitely. So man, that's, I wonder what this is gonna taste like, and then I wonder what it would taste like on espresso. Hmm. I'm gonna smell yeah, the I'm gonna smell beans. The as well. Mm. 
That's a very light, clean smell. I really like it. Um, it's got some chocolateiness to it. I think that's the Honduras. Um, uh, Josh had a very good observation about the beans uh, earlier. What do the beans kind of look like? The beans look a little darker than I would have imagined. Um, but of yeah, course it's dark. a blend, so there's going to be three different, um, three different beans, right? Yeah. So, yeah, some of them look darker than others, obviously, when you have a blend. Uh, but I just thought in general, I didn't know if this was a light roast or a dark roast. Or, or not a dark, but like a light or like a medium. Yeah. I don't think it really says. It doesn't. But espresso um, generally is very, it's not, I don't, I don't like the word dark. Because dark roast coffee is just burnt. Yeah, so. Oh, 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 I got a handful of coffee. Oh, what you want me to eat these? Yeah, eat it. What's going on, Brittany? What's going on, Trina? Thanks for joining the show. Yeah, so, uh, I don't know one of, which one of the three I just ate, but, uh, eating coffee is weird. It is weird. <laughs> um, Definitely but, not great. uh, so you asked or talked about it being light roast or medium. I'm going to go probably with a light to medium. I would agree. Definitely not dark, even if it's an espresso. So espresso doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be darker. It just, it just has more bold flavor. Yeah, I think they're, yeah, they're looking. That's why they add the, like, the Brazilian and Guatemalan. Yeah. So they want to get that, that nuttiness. And then they add the other stuff, like the Ethiopians, to get that sweet. So, like, if, you're, if we're talking about um, how we what we look for in a shot of espresso, you got the... The sour, a little bit up front. That's I'm gonna guess the Ethiopian. The uh, middle one's gonna be that sweet, so that persimmon, that uh, Honduras, and then that nuttiness, that bitterness at the end. That's I believe they're getting that from the Brazil. So we are ready to taste this. Who out there is ready to taste this? Throw some hearts. It still kind of has a tomato y like a nutty, tomato-y type scent to it. Very light, very light, very, very It fruity. doesn't look very light, but it smells very light. Yeah. It's the, it's definitely... It definitely, like, it didn't have an ambery, reddish color to it. It definitely had a more, like, bold, darker color. I'm, I'm definitely getting, like, a tomato paste kind of smell from it. Yeah. Um, you know how, like, tomato paste smells different than, like, tomato soup? Yeah. It's got that little bit of, like, that, that richness to it. Yeah, it's, it's almost like got, like, a dryness. Sweet, yeah, it's yeah. Like a sweetness to it, yeah. All right, Josh is trying it for the first time. It's definitely bitter. It's bitter? It's got like a dryness, a very dry finish. Kind of threw me off, actually. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's almost got like an espresso finish to it. Mm -hmm. A good espresso finish to that's, it, I should say. That's kind of weird. It's not Definitely as weird. yeah, it's not as sweet as it smells. It's not as sweet as it smells, and also let me see this real quick. Blackberry grapefruit. Yeah, both uh -huh. of those are pretty bitter. Uh huh. They are very bitter, but I just don't know what a persimmon is or like what it tastes like or anything like that. So yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of just going on. What's going on, here, Brandon, but... aka Big Dog? Big Dog. Big Dog in the building. Um, yeah, I, it's good. It's I bet bitter. you this tastes way better as an espresso. Probably. That's, it is a seasonal espresso. Yeah. But the thing with that is if we were to do this as an espresso, then you got to dial it in. And yeah, they give you what to do, but you still got to figure out the coarseness. and um, 17 grams, huh? That's, we do 20. Yeah, but they're also doing one-ounce shots, so that makes sense. Uh, that, I was going to say the 33, you, very... Yeah, because, man, 33 seconds for a, for a one-ounce bowl. Unless they do the split. Oh, good point, Josh. Good point. Like, I didn't think about that. Stuff. Yeah. Where they have the port filter with the two, and they put... So, here we do two-ounce shots. Yeah. Uh, but a lot of places do one-ounce shots. And 33 grams. Our, we like ours to be around, yeah, 64 to, like, 68-ish. The one I pulled today that tasted good was 66. 20 to 66. And that was a two-ounce at 66 grams. So... 33 for one ounce, it's pretty on par. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I'm 
I'm not quite having that Eureka moment. I'm gonna be honest. I just can't decide if it tastes like anything to me. Like yeah. I'm just not getting a whole lot of flavor. It's it tastes very dark. Like it tastes like almost like a Papua New Guinea, like that kind of yeah. boldness I'm and not, yeah. fullness where it doesn't smell like that. It smells very light. The beans were a little on the darker side, but they weren't like a dark roast where you just burn the coffee beans and sell it. Um, yeah, and so like I'm trying to think of like based off of what they're saying with the blackberry and the grapefruit. It definitely has that grapefruit dryness after you eat the, the grapefruit. I think yeah, yeah, I would say more blackberry. I actually do get a little hint of like a blackberry uh, note, and then followed by that bitterness. The cooler it gets, the more I get a blackberry is a blackberryness to it. Cooler it gets, the worse I don't like it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I'm getting that blackberry, but it it's just not. I don't know, man. I'm like so. Like I, I bet you this really is good as a, an espresso because I bet you it pulls out the stuff really quickly. I like, yeah. I bet you it's not meant to be sitting for three and a half minutes. Well, I was gonna say so. Obviously, when you have a pour over, it's a slower process and it's extracting all the flavor, but slower. Where an espresso, it's high pressure and it extracts those flavors very quickly. Obviously, about thirty seconds. Yeah, that's a big difference. Like, yeah, is it the same? Not really, but theoretically, it's the same process. You're pulling water through the coffee. And theoretically, it's coffee. the same. You should get relatively the same. You may, may not get as, because the espresso is a little bit more full body. It's yeah, got so, that thicker. So the last yeah. ritual I had, you could tell that it was supposed to be an espresso blend. It had those espresso flavor notes. It had the sourness, the sweetness, and the bitterness, but it was very, very, like, potent. I guess is a good word. So, I mean, I'm sure on an espresso it's better when you're only drinking two ounces of it, but I could not finish a cup of it. I had a couple. This is a spring 2020. That makes sense. Spring. Oh, so this is actually... We're late to the party. Yeah, but it was still... I mean, they're still selling it, so apparently it's a spring espresso blend, but they're still making it. Yeah, I don't... Because this was just brewed. Or, or roasted four days ago. I'm starting to get less of that bitter smell or taste right now. It's definitely not as dry at the end, but I, I am getting a little, a hint of a blackberry. Yeah, none of the good parts of the blackberry. No, it's it's still like that bitterness to yeah. the blackberry. It's blackberries are, are just a little sweeter, and then they finish off kind of tart and yeah. bitter. And this. It, you know, all right, I'm gonna be honest with you, man. Let's get to the show. Uh, what are you rating it, Josh? Aromatics. Aromatics six. Six. Oh, really? Six on the aromatics? Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just like, it, you know, the tomatoey type to it was like it wasn't great. I'm gonna drop these beans back in. There. Um, I don't know aromatics. The wet aromatics were very interesting, but it I didn't really have like a good scent to it. I did mention earlier when I first ground it up that it used to smell like uh, when Nick and I were drinking a lot of coffee during quarantine, because I had like, we, we stocked up, I bought like five different bags of coffee from Meyer and every day, two or three times a day, we were making pour overs. Yeah. Um, Man, that's it, a lot. Yeah, it was a lot of coffee. And we were, it reminded me of that because of the smell, but it's just, I don't know, it doesn't stand out to me. So, Aramax are going six. Yep. Selling it again, it would be a seven. I can't give it an eight. I would so not give it a six. So six out of ten on the aromatics. Um, that's a not the lowest that we ever have in the aromatics. So I don't. Actually, it might be. I don't know. I think we've given them sixes before. Um, All right. So taste. Um, I'm gonna give it one more try. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna give it another shot, but. I just don't like it. I don't know. I don't know if we got it on the wrong grind setting or what. I am. Not I mean, good. we ground it on the. No, I ground it up on the. What well, we do all of our pour yeah. here at the shop and for the show. I have to clear my palate. Let me let me try and clear the palate too. With a black and tan. I don't know if that's the best thing to cleanse the palate with, but. I mean, after. Cl okay. I was gonna say it tastes like vanilla, but that's because there was vanilla. I have vanilla in my cup too, <laughs> and I have ginger ale, which is a little sweet. So, 
Alright, after cleaning the palate, it does taste a little bit better. But I'm, oh man, I don't want to do this. Because I don't feel, I'm, I'm giving don't, it a six. I'm going to give it a five. Oh God. <laughs> I just See, don't I, like I, I like it enough to give it a six. I kind of like the bitterness, but I wish it was a little sweeter in the beginning. Yeah, I wish I, it had a sweetness and it then needs. finished with a, because I like a bitter finish in the coffee. Like Ethiopian coffee is my favorite coffee for the most part. I'm, yeah, I'm looking and for more it's got of that. that but, it's not, but I'm not Ethiopian. Not so when I saw that this had Ethiopian in it, I was excited because I love Ethiopians. I love how it's sweeter in the beginning, that berry fruitiness, and then it finishes bitter with a dry finish, like a, almost like a wine. And this just is just bitter. But again, we're making it pour over, and this is an espresso blend. So it could no. be our fault. All right, I'm going I'm to bring it back up to a six. I actually kind of... I, I don't want to say I like it, but I'm starting to uh, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah, um, it's just not that good. I'm sure we got. I'm tomorrow sure we, we got to. Well, you're gonna be gone. I'll tomorrow come, I'm gonna try here. So. I have the day off. You think I'm not gonna come down here? What else do I do? It's normally yeah. what people do on their day off. They don't come to work. Anyway, well, when I want coffee on my day off, that's, that's true. Work that's at a true. coffee shop. Yeah, I don't know, it's. I'm giving it a six. I'm sticking with a six and drinkability. Drinkability, let me, let me go look at how much this costs. Yeah, look at how much it is, but I'll be honest, I don't think the drinkability is going to be very high. Alright, so for a 12-ounce bag, it is $17.50. Um, plus shipping, I believe. Hold on, you're telling me this bag of coffee was $17.50? Yeah, I mean, okay. So, but, so you got to think, it's got it's got a Ethiopian in it, which is going to raise the price. Yeah, it's true. And I don't know how, um, oh, no, that was cool. <laughs> I don't know how rare Honduras beans are, but that probably raises it too. And it's a blend, so it takes time. So 1750 is not a crazy number. I don't think I would want to pay for this again. Yeah, so you bought this. Yeah. I thought you got it from, uh, uh, from trade. Yeah, but you no. haven't signed up for trade yet. Um, I am. So what prompted you to buy this? Just because you had heard of Ritual, you've had a Ritual before? Yeah, and I've heard they're very good, um, which I'm sure they are. I would love I, to try I would, a uh, Costa Rican one, like you said, your dad yeah. had and you tried it. Sounds great. I, and I also, like... I'm also not, like, blends. I want to try this espresso, because it's intended for espresso. Yeah. So, it's, so that's what it's intended for. It's yeah. not intended for... Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Over, so... We'll see how that tastes tomorrow. Yep. Uh, drinkability. What are you giving it? Um, drinkability. You want I, me to say it first? Yeah. Go ahead. I'm giving it a five. Yeah. I just it, it's. I'm sure it's good for espresso, but in reality, how often? How many people have an espresso machine in their home? Not many. Not many. And if you do, you gotta have the right stuff. You know, you gotta have your water softened. Yeah. Um, there's a lot that goes into a, a pulling a perfect espresso shot, way more than people think. I like where you're going with this. Adding this, that factor of the drinkability to that. It's intended for an it's espresso It's intended machine. for an espresso blend. So and if so, you don't have an espresso maker, and the drinkability espresso maker, is pretty low, espresso yeah. machine, the drinkability is very low. And even if you want to make it pour over, I'm just saying it's it's very bitter. Unless if you like really bitter coffee, go for it. Yeah, is this, but you guys this have been turning me on to more light roast, more sweeter. Yeah, like I kind of, said, I love this kind of reminds me of the uh, one from Bozeman, Montana. The Kenyan or the yeah, the Kenyan, the, the bourbon, barrel aged, or the, the bourbon. bourbon. That wasn't a Kenyan. What was that? No, that was just that, that was just that was like a, a Colombian blend. or something. Yeah, yeah, it just it was very bitter. Yeah, it just at first you liked it, then you said you tried it again. I tried so, it again, and yeah. it wasn't that great. Drinkability, I'm also going to go with five. So yeah, I think so we have the same that's scores. Seventeen. Yeah, we did. I'll do the math real quick. It's, this is the lowest that we've scored. I know that for a fact. This comes out to a 5.66. 5.66, I guess. Out of 10. That's, that's the lowest coffee we've ever scored. And I don't want to give coffees a low score like that, but we're, I think we're just drinking it in the wrong setting. I think so, too. I, I'm i very interested in seeing what it tastes like as it was intended. But right now, I, I, Do you I think cannot enjoy just, it. I can't finish the coffee. Do you, yeah, I can't either. Do you think if we ground it on the espresso setting like we do for the decaf, it would be decent? Run it? I don't if know. If we did 17.4? I don't know. We'll try it. You guys can try it tomorrow, but I'll be here when you do it. Or yeah. else don't do it. <laughs> I want to be here for that. Yeah, we'll try that. Um, All right. Yeah, that's uh, 
That's the show. Fortunate. <laughs> That's the show. I, 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 did, said. I was I, very excited. Yeah, I didn't have a lot of high hopes for this because I. I'm sure, so, like, that's why I want to, like, if I were in San Francisco right now and tried it, I'm sure we'd have a way different experience, just because we would have the right dialed in. You said it, we're going to San Francisco. Coffee Fest starts tomorrow. Yeah, but it's in L.A., I look. (laughs) I'm mad. I want to, I would love to go to San Francisco. You made it sound like a a cool place. San Francisco is a very, very cool place, man. I really have no ambition to go to L.A. Like, I'd like to go once, but, like, San Fran, I Seems cool. I want to go, but maybe it's maybe sometime. San Francisco, um, man, I've been to both. Both are really awesome. Both have way different cultures. Yeah. San Francisco's got that grunge um, culture, kind of that Midwest culture where it's grunge. Yeah. Grungy. What do you mean by grungy? You know, because when you say grunge, I immediately think of grunge music, and that's Seattle. Yeah. What? Is, how do they dress in Seattle? I've never been to Seattle. I also don't live there. I don't know. That doesn't matter. Grunge music. No, just, just like bags. like leather jackets, um, uh, jackets, jeans, boots. Like how G Easy dresses, and he's from he's from Oakland. He's from the Bay. All right, cool. But yeah, so like just grungy, like grungy. All right, well, there's that's the word for the cool. day. Grungy. Do you, are we doing a? I can't breathe. Uh, quote of the day. Yeah. Um, I am gonna say it here. That was a Ducati. So. I get sidetracked by uh, motorcycles and cars. I think we're almost at the 30 minute mark. So I like this one. So, yeah, we are. Winning doesn't always mean being first. Winning means you're doing better than you've done before. By Bonnie Blair, who is a speed skater, and I'm assuming Olympian. Uh, I don't really know. Yeah, well. What? What's, what's, y'all, what's y'all's next new flavor in coffee? Walt, uh, seasonal menu is coming out soon. I will uh, let you know, as always, when you come in. Um, so you may be able to try some. Um, but yeah, so. I, uh, let me see. Winning doesn't always mean being first. Winning just means. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one before. You're That's doing cool. better than you've done before. That's I like cool. that a lot. I agree with that. You, everybody's in a competition it's all, it's all situation. Itself. Yeah. Like, yeah, sometimes winning is winning and getting the first place trophy, but it's not always. If you are better than when you started, you won. Yeah, no, absolutely. You are competing with yourself, not others, most of the time in life. So, yeah. It, even in uh, like speed skating competitions, you're you're kind of competing with yourself because you're just trying to do your best, and that's all anybody can ask out of themselves. To do your best. Yep. All right. All right. Well, on that note, we're gonna end the show. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, once again, it came out to a 5.66 out of 10, um, but. It is what it is. So good luck next time, right? Thank you guys for all tuning in to the show, and uh, we'll catch you guys. Yeah, whether it's in the morning, the afternoon, or at night. Yeah, whether it's in the morning, the day, or the night, catch you guys next time in two weeks. See you. If we, uh... Wait, is the persimmon like a tomatoy type flavor? I think so. It's got to be, because that's like what I taste. <laughs> okay, so as espresso, what are you rating this coffee? As espresso, um, aromatics... I'm still going to keep it at a six. It's espresso. It's not a lot. It's hard to get a good aromatic scent from espresso. Um, but the flavor. Very, very good. You guys got this dialed in really good. Um, kind of starts off a little sour. Um, definitely has that bitterness aftertaste. Or the bitter aftertaste like from the blackberry and the grapefruit. And there's a little bit of sweetness in there. Which I'm going to assume is the persimmon. I don't really know. Um. As an espresso, I'm giving this a 8.5 out of 10 because that's a good espresso. Um, drinkability, it's espresso. How often are you really just going to drink straight espresso? For me, it's only a couple times a week, but uh, maybe like an 8 as far as espresso drinkability. So, yeah. If you guys are looking for a good espresso blend, look up Rituals Eureka because it's pretty good.